Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Titanium Man Garage. And today I'm working on a Sportsman 500 HO 2001. So if you saw my video earlier, I'm calling this thing the rat's nest. I give uh, pretty much every one of my uh, wheelers a nickname that I work on. Uh, this one had a rat's nest in the, by the clutch area. I took the clutch cover off, it was horrible. Also, I pulled the carb off, the air box off, and there's a rat's nest in there. That air box just stunk horribly. I think they crawled up and died in there. Uh, I also pulled the exhaust off and there was all guts and just, yeah, it was nasty. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. And the exhaust, I took that off, soaked it, and I'll show you what I got going on right now. So this thing only has 775 miles on it, believe it or not. So you know what the old saying goes, if you don't use it, you lose it. Well, this was sitting in a barn for a long time. And uh, guy hardly used it, rode it hard, put it away wet, and uh, would start one day. And then uh, some critters made a home out of it. So this came in as a trade, and I started tearing into it. I don't know if you can see that cam. That cam looks really clean. Uh, I took the uh, intake boot off. They actually crawled up and died <laughs> in the uh, the head. So there's uh, mouse guts and crap in there. Uh, the pull rope broke, so I'm thinking the guy probably tried to start it. The Bendex gear was actually seized up, and this is all rusty and corroded. I cleaned that up. So I was pretty fortunate. I was able to take some PB Blaster, squirt this thing down, and I got it to move like it should. Not moving good. you ever wonder what to do with your old gas? I use it uh, for quite a few things actually. Cleaning up the, the wheeler itself, cleaning up the engine and engine components. So what I ended up doing was I ended up uh, pouring gas into the, the intake and I'm letting it soak. Uh, it's just all pretty nasty and uh, trust me if you were in here right now it stinks to, to high heaven because the the mouse crap. So I'm letting that soak, I've been letting it soak for about an hour, and I went through the electronics, found a couple of wires were crappy there. Um, the starter solenoid does work, I heard it clicking, but the starter does not, so that must have rusted tight from sitting. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to go ahead and pull that starter out. And there's really not a whole lot to it, there's, you know, pull your cables off. Pull one bolt here, the one bolt back here. And she pops right out. Once you get that Bendex out of the way. And I'm gonna try to clean this up. Once I get that starter in, I'm gonna try to turn this thing over. I'll put the uh, rocker cover back on. I just took it off because I wanted to see if uh, there's anything nasty going on there, but I also found a rat's nest up by the headlight. I took that all apart. I'm inspecting my wires. Um, other than that, this thing should clean up pretty good. I'm hoping it will run good when I do uh, get the engine cleaned out. I was uh, contemplating ripping the, the head off and just soaking the head, just getting everything out and uh, seeing if there's a nest down by the pistons, but uh, this uh, gas soaking trick, I'm gonna let that soak. I'm gonna put the new starter in. We've got the spark plug pulled out. I'm gonna crank this thing about 100 times and try to get all the crap out of there, get an air gun in there, blow everything out, get it out of the exhaust, and pray for the best. If that doesn't work, I'll be pulling the head off. So I wish I could get this to come in in the camera, you can't really see it, but there's a layer of crap down by the valves, way down at the bottom there. Um, so my gas trick didn't work out quite well because there's something um, letting the valves stay open a little bit so all the gas drained into the piston 
which which is fine because it'll blow out. So I'm gonna take the air gun and try to blow all that out. Let me see if I can stick the screwdriver in so you can see what I'm talking about. I got I don't know a bunch of crap in there in the bottom. I know you can't see it in the camera, but it's uh there's a pretty good layer of just crap. I don't know what it is from whatever mess the mice had made. It's stuck in there, so I'm gonna take the air gun and blow that out. And hopefully I'll be able to get this cleaned up nice. Alright guys, <laughs> this thing's really nasty. <laughs> I think I got her cleaned out pretty good. Maybe you'll be able to see it now. Uh, we can see it. At least I can see the valves. <laughs> Before there was just a layer of crap in there. So that's cleaning up pretty decent. I might clean it one more time. Soak it with a little more gas. But she's working. New starter installed. Blew the gas out of the, the head. And there's still gas in the cylinder, so we're gonna make this thing spit. Let's see what happens. Still nothing, huh? All right, so now we got another electrical issue. All right, I got my new carb hooked up. Starter hooked up, I've been uh, running a couple cycles to try to get everything blown out, and I saw something interesting. The exhaust is actually sucking in <laughs> when it goes through the revolutions, which is kind of funny. So I'm gonna have to pull the flywheel off, maybe the uh, Woodruff key snapped. The timing is definitely off because it's um, it's sucking in when it should be blowing out. So. Kind of comical. Let me see what I can find and uh, I'll let you guys know. What I found out was the rockers on the intake side were really tight. So I went ahead and loosened them up. I'm going ahead adjusting them now. I can uh, still get a little more adjusting to do. Gotta get uh, 0 0.006 with the feeler gauge. That's pretty good. I'm going to tighten that down. I'm finding this happens on a lot of my Polaris's. There's good. And I also noticed the exhaust side was loose. So that means the intake valve was opening before it should have. That's probably why everything was sucking in through the exhaust. You just want a little bit of drag so you can, that's kind of tight yet. Do the same thing on the exhaust side. There you go. A little bit of drag there. It's good. I'll do the same thing on the exhaust side. So I'll give you a little lowdown of what I found. Uh, I pulled the pull start cover off. I pulled the flywheel off. The Woodruff key was in the right position. Uh, a little FYI for you guys. Uh, I like to pull the flywheel off to adjust the timing only because uh, the magnetic force once in a while will try to turn the flywheel a little bit one way or the other. And this way I'm like dead on, so it doesn't move. And then I adjusted my rockers, uh, like you saw, and put the flywheel back on, 
And now she sounds a little bit better. Before it was sound like it was like going boop, 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 boop. Now it sounds better, but I'm charging my battery. So my battery's a little low. And I'm gonna fire this thing up, hopefully. It seems to be pretty stubborn. It doesn't want to start. So getting a little frustrated. I know you guys have been there, so you're probably understanding. That's probably why you're watching this video. But uh, I'll figure it out and I'll let you know. So with the pull start rope broken and my battery draining, it doesn't seem like it's got enough kick to kick it over. And also if you've seen earlier, the uh, starter relay uh, was not working. So I have another one here that I plan to install. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick what uh, what I do. I disconnected the uh, the cable going to the starter, and this is the cable going to the battery. Uh, when I uh, hooked up the battery and I hit the start button, I saw a spark come off of there. So it is clicking like it's supposed to, like it sounds like it's working, but I think something fried. So what I do is because um, I. I haven't replaced this yet, but I wanted to see if the starter worked. So what I do is I disconnect this and I jump it. Okay, and I got it to fire. So you gotta make sure the key is on when you do this, but for some reason, it just won't seem to kick over. So I'm gonna replace that and said I, uh, I think there was something wonky going on with this intake boot. <clears throat> So I might replace that. Um, Cause uh, I can crank this thing over and it just does not seem to want to fire. So I'm gonna try replacing that intake boot. I'm also gonna try replacing the starter solenoid. Uh, it's kind of hard to start it, pull a choke, and tap the throttle a little bit to see if I can get it to fire all at the same time while I'm um, jumping it. So. I'm gonna give that a shot first. If I can't get it to fire, I'm gonna have to do a leak down test because I'm beginning to wonder if there's still crap in the valves allowing it to stay open just a hair where it won't allow it to fire. So that's where I'm at now. Um, getting a little frustrated. Normally, <laughs> I'm pretty good at these. I can get them running pretty, pretty quick. I can usually uh, uh, figure out what the issue is. Um, that leak down test uh, shows there's a lot of air rushing through the valves, then I'm gonna end up uh, pulling that head off. Because there might be something stuck in there that's um, letting the valves stay open. Because uh, I did get it to pop, and it did backfire. So that's telling me it's running lean. Um, there's air coming in there that shouldn't be um, so that's where the intake boot is making me wonder if that's the issue. So, Also, I'm beginning to wonder if this engine was replaced. Um, the uh, prop shaft in the front, the U-joints were shot. Also, I can wiggle this. The, uh, the rear bearings are shot, so I'm going to have to replace those. This is the prop shaft, if you guys are wondering what I'm talking about. The other one, the U-joints the were shot on, I already just replaced that. The tire rods were shot, I can move this. So I'm beginning to wonder if somebody swapped the motor and put the speedometer on with it. I mean, the cam does look really clean, the, the engine does look like it, it has low mileage on it, but this wheeler looks like it was pretty beat, so that's... Uh, beginning to make me wonder. You never know what you're gonna get when you buy something, so. You know, it said 775 miles on it. Who knows what the guy did this thing. He got a, did a motor swap and threw the Speedo on with it. Shit, for all I know, this thing could have 5,000 miles on it. I'll tell you, the way the uh, bearings look and the tie rods and the prop shaft, I don't know. This guy did some plowing with it, so. Um, I doubt plowing with only 775 miles would have uh, made everything go like this unless he did not maintain it or lube anything, which kind of looks like he didn't. 
but uh, yeah, it's making me uh, question how many miles this thing actually has on it. All right, so I got this replaced. I swapped it out for another uh, old one I had laying around. Now when I hit the key, so fire over. So that's one issue out of the way. Next is I'm gonna try that car boot. Replace that intake boot. Um, still backfiring, so it's sucking in air or it's loading up with fuel, one of the two. So I'm gonna check that out. All right, this might not be the best way to do leak down tests, but it works for me. Uh, I'm hooking up air to the cylinder and I'm moving the fly rail around to see what I get. And now I'm at uh, top dead center. They're leaking out of the intake and the exhaust. I'm going to turn this, now the... the exhaust uh, valve should be opening, but air is coming out of the carburetor. I'm running out of air. Now air should be coming out of the exhaust. And that top dead center. There's a little air coming out of the intake valve. Weird part is when I turn the flywheel this way, it's supposed to open the exhaust valve. I turn the flywheel this way, the first thing that happens is the exhaust valves open and I'm getting air sucking into the intake. So I had adjusted the valve lash, so uh, makes me wonder if there's something going on with the valves themselves. That's why this thing probably isn't firing up. The valves aren't closing like they should. Um, I think I'm going to check the valve lash, just double check if anything moved. Um, and then try this again. All right guys, so this thing has become a living nightmare for me. Um, so I did the leak down test, and uh, at first when I did it, I put a little too much air pressure in it, but usually you need about five to 10 uh, pounds of pressure. Uh, I've got air rushing out of the intake and the exhaust, so it's telling me the, there's an issue with the valves. So instead of me talking and going step by step with how I'm gonna tear this thing apart, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and tear it down and I'll leave links on here. Um, I have different videos on how to take a head off and all that other happy crap. Um, so I'm just gonna go at it. I already got my hoses disconnected, so the coolant's drained. I got my springs off the exhaust. Um, so I'm just gonna take the exhaust off the carb and go to town and start ripping the head off. I wanna see if there's something going on with the, the piston or the valves. I'm thinking the valves are my issue. I'm going to go at it. Alright, I got my uh, choke linkage and my throttle lever disconnected up here already. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the card off. Well. Intake boot off. There's now five after five. Let's see how long it takes me to rip this thing down.
on intake poop removed. Loosen the head bolts first before I take them on and rack it up. Duster. Here. 
chain, getting it out of the way. Don't drop it in the engine. And I can move the drum strap. be ready to pull. Took what, all of 10 minutes? Alright. Alright, major. I don't know what you want to call it, if that's carbon or what that is. A lot of crap on the piston. Valves, oh my god, they're so crusty. Uh, I don't know what that is. Could be why the valves aren't closing all the way. There, I'm going to take a closer look at that. See what's going on, maybe uh, clean the top of the saw. Ew. It doesn't even look like carbon, it looks like rat crap. See what's going on there? I actually might pull that jug just to see what the rings look like seeing this far. You got the hose clamp disconnected here. You got the uh, well lines disconnected on the other side. Alright, so that oil ring, the piston's still nasty. Something made a nest in there. Cylinder rings are shot, so they're gonna need a new piston. Um, so, we'll do that, clean off the valves. I probably wasn't getting enough compression. Go ahead and take that apart.
go to town. All right, so I'll show you what I got. Um, this piston is all gooped up. The rings are stuck in. Um, they don't look burnt. Um, I'm actually wondering if it was from the mouse nest. You can see the oil rings all caked up full of mouse crap. Um, kind of wondering if I could just let the soaking gas clean up, put it back together, but I do have another piston, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and throw it in. Um, yeah, I've never seen that before. That's weird. So that was my problem. Um, thought it was the valves. I was getting compression, but not enough. So, there you have it. I had this engine laying around that I had rebuilt, and what had happened with this one was somebody had bought the crank off eBay. Actually, it was somebody that I got a four-wheeler from. He never rebuilt the engine. So I took the crank, put it in this case, and built the engine up. And wouldn't you know it, the crank is bent. So I pulled the motor out, and I put a different motor in the wheeler I was working on. So I'm just going to strip this down, use it for parts. I got a brand new piston in there yet. Uh, the valves are really clean. I'm going to go ahead and use that, use the piston, and it's got a brand new timing chain. So I'm going to go ahead and install that right away, and we'll get this bad boy fired up. One new piston and cylinder installed, and I'm going to keep working. I got the head gasket on. I'm ready to put the nice clean valves on. Next, take a little oil and dip it in the bolts. Go ahead and throw them in. What I do is I snug them up. That'll go through the torque sequence. myself a new chain and on the chain there are different color links. Um, normally the lighter color link goes on the bottom with the timing work down here. The two links on the top go with the two dimples on the gear. I'm going to go ahead and fish this in. I'll put my timing right where it needs to be. Alright. So the two off color links with the two dimples there. And then down at the bottom, timing mark. And an off color link down there. When you have all that lined up, this your key. Everything all goes in a line and you are straight at top dead center. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down, put my rockers on, put my uh, chain tensioner on, get this bad boy buttoned up and maybe I can get it fired tonight. Ooh, she's looking pretty. Just got to put the intake and the exhaust on, hook up the fuel lines, this thing should be ready to fire. Let's see how she runs. Runs pretty quiet, actually. I need a new uh, throttle cable, but uh, other than that, sounds nice. I'll take it. Quiet as a mouse. All right. Speaking of mice, uh, you got a rat's nest in your in your head, <laughs> in your piston. Um, I had to tear this whole thing down and rebuild it. Sounds pretty quiet now. So 
Hope you like this video. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it. And like always, till next time.